created for changes, chosen for greatness. All things are possible, be all you can be in Christ. Maximize your life. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall be glad and rejoice in it. Uh, welcome to Max Life on Sparks on the Land. I'm your host, Dr. Peter Adegbie. And I have my co-host here, Pastor Theodora Adegbie. On Max Life, we use character studies to learn about life, our human condition, and responses to events and circumstances. And with the help of our special guests, we explore ways in which we can maximize our lives by learning from their stories. Uh, last week, we uh, started to look at the story of Isaac and Rebecca, Esau and Jacob, and the dysfunction in the family. With me this week, again, are Pastor Dr. Julius and Mrs. Winifred Fashanu, from Life Transformation Church. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. You are both welcome. We're excited to have you again this week because Thank you. Thank you. we didn't finish the business last week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. We have also David and April Olatunji. Uh, they are both musicologists. David is a music entrepreneur, director of Music Hands in Newcastle. And uh, April also is all into music and uh, She's mother to their four lovely children. Good morning. Hello. Now, in this story, um, we have symptoms of a dysfunctional family, all glaring at us. Estrangement, you know, family members uh, possibly avoiding other family members. Jacob insisting that uh, to give his brother food, he must sell his birthright, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, anger may be expressed or repressed. <coughs> you know, that was something that uh, I think David mentioned last week uh, about um, Rebecca not being fulfilled, not being happy. A lack of trust seen as faulty patterns of communication, deception, inability to speak the truth to one another, and the unhealthy secrecy. Uh, last week we looked so much at the relationship between the man and the woman and this week I want us to really um, as parents, we're all parents some of us have older kids <laughs> but we're still parents <laughs> you know, how do you really uh, prevent sibling rivalry you remember in the very first family with Adam and Eve that was the problem. We had the first frat fratricide when Cain killed Abel. And that almost happened in this story as well. How do you prevent this kind of rivalry, especially when you have children who have strong personalities? Mm. You know, you have children who have strong, distinct personalities. How do we uh, raise them and keep them friends. Mm -hmm. I think the fashion knows you start because you have <laughs> older children. <laughs> and then I come to uh, David and April. Okay. All right, then um, I'll start. I think uh, the very important thing is to um, allow or help our children to know the Lord themselves. Mm -hmm. Show them the way of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. Mm -hmm. We must encourage our children to have this personal relationship with the Lord. 
no i mean it's good to bring them to church they come with us to church but when they have this one-to-one -one personal encounter with the lord and they begin to read the bible themselves they know what the word of god says then they receive grace to follow it so i think the first step is from the very young age let's bring our children up in the way of the lord they know where the bible says where there is strife and envy mm. it leads to confusion and every evil work so if they have the fear of god in their hearts and they love god it will prevent a lot of evil so i believe the first step is letting them know the way of god try to raise them up with god's word i think I, I agree with you you know in church when we do children dedication mm. i always yeah. joke and i say look this is Parent dedication because <laughs> that's true. the children don't know. The that's children don't know they have been dedicated. No, that's true. The children that's don't know they have been dedicated. So mm. I said, look, it's parent dedication because mm. what you are doing is you are bringing this child before God, mm. and you are saying, we as parents, husband and wife, we are going to create an atmosphere mm. that will allow this child to grow to be a positive godly individual yeah. Mm. Yeah. and so you really you are coming to report yourself as it were mm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and so i, I agree with you mm -hmm. it, it takes uh, creating that atmosphere, that atmosphere to allow that child mm. to know god as you know god yeah. mm. and i've never been one for maybe forcing children you know by force mm. you know to go to church mm. I believe it is the example. <coughs> example the parents show. Example the parents show. It is. The uh, uh -huh. the yeah. it is the, 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 the life. These lessons are more caught mm. than taught. Yeah, that's thank true. you. Yeah. So yeah. it's the atmosphere we create mm. for the children, and that's why I was reading an article. I like the way the, the man put the, the uh, story about family life. He said, the relationship between the parents create the heating system in the house, mm. Mm. and so mm. whatever you see. The children's behavior is the barometer to show whether the heating system is working <laughs> right yeah. or wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really so, uh, because what we do, the children name it, they came as blank canvas. That's true. And so it's w whatever they're exposed to mm. yeah. that eventually formed them. Mm. Although yeah. we come to a stage of accountability when each person will have to take mm. um, uh, have a sense of well for their own behavior and all that. Yeah. Uh, 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 yes. Yeah, and going uh, yes, I was going to say that what, what you've said is actually true and right because if the parents do not create an atmosphere of love and unity or equality between the children, if they don't create that atmosphere that they are equally loved and equally valued, yes, that can generate to a situation whereby. Uh, rivalry will develop within themselves and yes. because they, they, they need to know the parents need to know that mm. these children even though they are uniquely created by God and different mm. they should not prefer one for the other in the way they treat them or relate with them they must make sure that they create an atmosphere where they know each child in the house know that they are equally loved mm. and valued mm. and, and mm. whatever a, a, like for instance if there is a attitude or behavior and the consequence to be meted out to that kind of attitude and behaviors they should not treat one better than the other exactly and they should let the children know that this particular attitude or behavior has been shown by this particular child and that all others should see the consequence that was melted out yes. to actually correct that particular kind of behavior mm -hmm. when that atmosphere is created in the home by the grace of God with prayers as well, the children will know that look, mm. we must value each other and relate with each other. And then and the unity respect. that is that is needed because the <coughs> family is the bedrock of the society. Mm. Yes. And when unity is absent in the family that's supposed to be the bedrock mm. of the mm -hmm. society, then it the negative water continues to flow. Mm. And I believe this program by God's grace will be able to dam any negative flow uh, because mm. parents will we have to take on that responsibility of mm. cre creating the right atmosphere mm -hmm. we'll pick that up after this music mm. welcome back to max life and uh, i have uh, pastor mrs uh, fashanu and 
uh, David and Epilolatunji here with us. The story of Isaac, Rebecca, Esau and Jacob and many others in the Bible teach us about God's continual grace through messed up individuals and dysfunctional families. It gives us hope that even in our mess and confusion and dysfunction, God can still make something beautiful from our lives. Mm. In this family that shows parental favoritism, sibling rivalry, deception and manipulation, we see the human heart and its depth of depravity. If, for instance, one child is celebrated by mom mm. and gets criticized by dad, mm. there is a confusion in that child's personality. That's, That's right. right. That's and right. before you know it, the child begins to develop his own pathway mm. of defending himself mm -hmm. and protecting his emotions and sometimes becomes gruff with people outside mm -hmm. becomes grasping mm -hmm. and that's what you found you, you, you found jacob doing jacob became very grasping although that was his name <laughs> he was <laughs> grasping right from, <laughs> right the, from, the, stomach, womb. from the womb mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you could see that this family settings create those problems mm -hmm. I, I i i i remember my own family you know, I, I appreciate my parents for this. My dad not used to joke then that we were seven. And um, he, there, there was a way that no matter what happens, they both get back home early enough. By 6.37, everyone is at home. Mm. And we have a common sitting room. And he used to tease them that, I'm happy I don't have a very big house where you folks can just disappear into different corners. We must <laughs> all come together here. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, it was funny then, but it matters. It mm -hmm. things would really have been terrible if we were not coming together. Mm -hmm. And of course, my both himself and his wife, my mom, they would, they would be there with us and all that. And in other things, we had a common floor mm -hmm. and all that. And so, parents must create a common bag. Uh, platform for their children mm. it doesn't matter how wealthy we become or how little we have mm. we can create mm. a good platform for family life it's not just when we decide to go on holidays mm. yeah. Yeah, every day right. should be a day yeah. of celebration yeah. maybe mm. 10 minutes like we in our family um, when our children were growing up when they were at home no matter what happens we'll make sure we'll have a time of communion together mm. no matter what we're which we are rushing off to. We'll make sure we have a time yeah, of communion together and read, read a book of Pro uh, a chapter from yeah, the book Proverbs. of Proverbs. And when things were getting busier, they had instructions to have their own notebook where they can put down a verse mm -hmm. of scripture that they have read from chap uh, that chapter of Proverbs. So and there was a binding, there was a common... Scrabble battle. Yes, and then there was a common... <laughs> Uh, yeah. platform for us to work with mm. and then there is a scrabbles we play scrabbles <coughs> and all that mm. so yeah. parents will not wait for expensive holidays yeah. before yeah. they bond with their children mm -hmm. yeah. and in that process of time because as we were talking i was thinking sometimes i've heard people say oh it's not possible to love your children equally and i just wonder the blessings of god makes rich and adds no yes, sorrow mm. so if these children are a blessing they can't now become a problem it can't be a problem loving them equally because they have different personalities, giftings from God that yeah. we can celebrate yeah. in yeah. each child. I think that's a really good point. Um, our, our prerogative as parents is to know our children and to know their strengths mm. and yes. to know their weaknesses yes. and to be able to celebrate the victories and mm. to help them when they fail. Because yes. failures are also an important part of growing. Yes. That's know. right. Yeah. Um, and to be able to celebrate each other's strengths and victories, yes. you know, not seeing it as better, but it's, yeah. if you have it's that strength, then I have that strength because mm. we're family. We're mm. Exactly. Mm. We're yeah. united. You build us all up. I mm -hmm. think it's really looking at rivalry. That That's mm. the, the topic, which is the word, which is yeah. difficult. I'm just looking at the word rivalry and it's when a person competes with another person for the same objective mm -hmm. or for superiority in the same field of activity. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you're saying mm -hmm. is if you make your children feel they all have to fit into this one box, mm -hmm. you're all competing for this one thing, yeah. mm -hmm. then you're setting them up for rivalry. But when you're acknowledging 
this person has this strength mm. which is beneficial for all of us yeah yes. and this mm. is your strength which is beneficial yes. for all like of us just like the body of Christ just like the body of Christ yeah, the foot can't say to the hand I have no mm. need of you each mm. person brings each of their strengths to the family and you celebrate mm. those I think the trouble comes when you acknowledge someone's strengths to the detriment of mm. somebody else yes, and the then they mm. feel rejected mm. unworthy unappreciated mm. so that's the trouble mm. we have as parents is mm. to mm. even though we might like one of our children's strengths more than another mm. we have to show the love to the children equally mm. and it's possible right. yeah it's possible to give them an unconditional love mm -hmm. yes that is what it is that's what god gave to us an yeah. unconditional love and also we correct our children when we correct them in the family we must make sure that the standard of correction is the same yes, yes. i mean two children have done the same thing and we give a greater punishment to one and a lesser one to the other it shouldn't be yeah. the children must know that we are loved equally mm -hmm. if they are going to punish us whatever maybe you are not having this toy for one week it should be the same for the other not mm -hmm. lesser yeah. so the yeah. parent must cultivate that, that balance that balance yeah. Yeah. that balance to make sure that yeah. what we do for one we do it for the other I, not I, I think the challenge we have is we've Ages. i think we've used the word should so many times right yeah, <laughs> okay right. and if the issue is that you're a child and you realize that the parent is showing preference yeah. the reality is there's a lot of things we should do we mm. have a virtuous standard to attain to mm. Mm. but for the children you, uh, of parents you need to realize that your parents are flawed yes. right yeah, you need to right, realize that right. they yes, are yes. not going to do everything they yeah. should do mm. that's yeah. all of the time and the children need to have grace towards their parents that's right. just the way parents need to have grace towards their children mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. That, that's a very very it's <coughs> important but we have to teach them because they we wouldn't ha they wouldn't know it is the grace we show to one another mm. as a couple mm. that our parents are going our children are going to take the lesson from that's because right. really they're a blank canvas mm. yes when we show grace to them mm. and show grace to one another Mm -hmm. I think caught rather than taught is a great yes. way That's of looking right. at it. Yes. That's, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because the, Christ, I mean, the children learn more by what they see anyway mm. than yeah, what you tell them what to do. Tell them. Yeah. Mm. Okay, we'll continue on the other side of the break. Welcome back to Max Life. And uh, we've been looking at the family dynamics of um, Isaac, Rebecca, uh, Esau, and Jacob. And we had Pastor Julius and... Uh, uh, David talked about their perspective of what was going on there. Th this is yeah. very interesting because um, we've mentioned two things now that I, I just want to uh, for us to look at. Um, if there is a, a teenager or a child listening to this program now who perceives that perhaps um, I'm, I'm not the favorite of my parents What's the Christian response, you know, to that? If a child should come to you for counseling and say, look, I think dad loves so, so, and so more than myself, you know, how do you, how do, what should be the Christian response? How should a child or a teenager um, approach this subject? Uh, I believe if a teenager approaches me on, on something like that and say, well, I believe dad loves me more, mom loves me more, I will be encouraging that in that look. It says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that the thoughts of God towards you, they are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. Um, I'll be encouraging that in that have this mindset that God loves you first mm -hmm. and your destiny will be fulfilled as long as you walk in the pathway of God. Mm -hmm. So having that mindset that no, come watch me, what God wants me to be, I will get there as long as I am in the will of God. So that would be my first encouragement to that to that teenager that hold on to God, be well assured that God will take you. If we remember the story of um, of Joseph, he Bible says his brothers hated him, even though he went through different challenges. You know, from the pit to the prison here and there. Eventually, he became the prime minister of Egypt. God's plan still came to pass uh, in, in his life. I know we're looking at the story of Isaac, Rebecca, and uh, Jacob and Esau. But if we're looking at the life of uh, Joseph, we don't know why his father loved him and gave him the coat of many colors, but his brother hated him. 
and eventually he got to where God wanted him to be. So that would be my first advice that whoever is listening to me right now and you feel maybe uh, my father loves me more or doesn't love me, this and that, you feel rejected. As long as you are working with God, you will get to where God wants you to get to. Yeah. In, in addition to that, I, I will want to encourage that child to seek uh, an audience with his or his, his or mom or her dad mm. who if he or she perceives that they it's love so more, than, yeah, more than the other children. Create an audience of, to speak with a particular parent and ask them mm. a question that I perceive mm. you love this way more than you loved me. Mm -hmm. And then with it, there's discussion and interaction, probably the dad or the mom mm. will be able to explain that truly he is not that he preferred hey to him or him the other one to her that the issue able to because sometimes the children may misunderstand mm -hmm. or misread yeah what their parents are doing. And so for instance there was a case of like that when a, a dad mm. eventually thank God he, mm. he said it in the church yes. that uh, the, da the the son mm. perceived that he didn't love him mm. as he loved his sister mm. Mm. and the son the dad said hey he never <laughs> he never actually crossed his mind that yes. he, he the atmosphere he created was like if he was showing favoritism to the yes. sister more mm. than the son mm. so the dad now to have to come down and say i'm sorry he was with he was him. yeah that it, it wasn't real that he, he loved the yeah, sister the more than the other that mm -hmm. he was just trying to bring up bring me up to as be a, a man, be a man mm -hmm. and be called call it called call, uh, the the lifestyle or the qualities of yes. man mm. in the mankind my man, manhood in him mm -hmm. and that truly he loved them so both to easily treat him like will treat again yeah. 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 exactly he said that in the church uh, he, and, uh, he that, said that, he began to weep yeah he be, uh, because i think they were, both of the the sister and the son were going to university and the boy just suddenly said among the friend that uh well my dad is towards my sister and he had that he said what he, he has just been trying to bring him up as a man, be a man, mm -hmm. and he did not know that the son was taking it negatively. Mm. So I think... And thank that God that was corrected, and was now corrected. They, they, they can see that, yeah. oh, dad actually loved him, and it was good. In, in a lot of cases, I think it usually would be misconception or, yes. or misperception, I think, yeah. in a large percent of uh, circumstances <laughs> that I've been in, personally, mm. I've mm. misperceived what mm. somebody thought of me or mm. a situation like that mm. and as you said before sister it's really important that you rather than going and spreading strife amongst others going to your other brothers and sisters mm. oh dad doesn't love me as much mm. as you or going mm. and complaining to someone else you right. go to the person that you perceive the offense with mm. Mm. You, as you're saying brother you go to your mom you go to your dad you you speak about how you feel mm. and right. the good chance yeah. is mm. it's just mm. misperceived That's That's right. Right. And, this, and this will be clarified mm. but unfortunately because of the sin and the human heart as you said earlier pastor sometimes there is going to be a time where the parent is showing preferential preference mm. to a child mm. and i suppose to the, if, if you're that person where you've taken this up with your parents and you can see that you know what they are showing that's where the love of god is yeah. the most important thing that you can know because mm, yeah. essentially he is the grounding and the root of all love mm. and that love that you get through your parents comes from him this is his commandment so coming to know god is where you are going to be uh, established in who you are as a person mm. Mm. Uh, and you're going to be able to work through this the rejection and the suffering and uh, the things that come through when your parents don't do what they should or what they ought because to because they're human because they're yeah. human and, and, yeah. and sometimes mm. you see we uh, parents also have their own challenges mm -hmm. at work uh, within the bigger family settings at church mm -hmm. yeah. because we are all flawed mm -hmm. human beings being moving towards perfection in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. and so sometimes a dad reacts not because he doesn't want to give you the money to buy the sneakers, mm -hmm. but he really doesn't have it. Yeah. He knows what the financial situation is. He has a bigger picture mm -hmm. of the situation. But then, the week before, your younger sister had asked for a pair of sneakers and the account was good mm -hmm. and he was able to give her. Mm -hmm. But then, by the following week, there was a crash, mm -hmm. Wall Street crash. Mm -hmm. 
mm. Google mm. crashed, mm. and mm. all the things have changed. Bitcoin has gone, mm. and <laughs> you know things happen that children will Can not understand. know about because mm -hmm. parents don't want to burden the children mm. with yeah. unnecessary, the unnecessary yeah. information. Yeah. And so sometimes I also want to use this medium to um, appeal to children to understand and pray for their parents mm. yeah. because sometimes parents too go through things parents that are struggling yeah parents are struggling, struggling. Are struggling. And yeah. it's not because they don't love you <laughs> yeah. or, and sometimes children even come from school and all sorts of competition in school um, yeah. The, yeah. the lunch box that this person has is better than my own lunch box <laughs> yeah. and i want a new lunch box and what did yeah. you i remember there was a particular christmas mm -hmm. i'll share it here um the f our first christmas here we just moved house on the 23rd of December that was our first Christmas and so we just moved house under a lot of stress and all that good beautiful place but we there wasn't time to do anything much mm. <laughs> and then my little girl came back from school after they resumed I mean there was no thought of Christmas gifts or tree in my mind at that point in time wow, mm. wow. I just said mom is uh, I didn't get Christmas gifts is it because our house, we don't have a chimney so that the Santa couldn't come down to drop my gifts. Wow. <laughs> you know, but it was because she went to school mm. and people were talking about the, the gifts, gifts they received. Mm. and they received mm. that mm. Christmas. But then, thank God, we had a family relationship where we are always together. Mm -hmm. We sit on the floor with the children, we eat snacks together, we play scrabbles together. So it was easy for her to ask, oh, yeah. That, yeah. why didn't I receive Christmas gifts like my friends? But some other setting if she didn't have that opportunity to ask me mm, she probably would keep that and that could become a traumatic event in her life that she could carry into her own marriage mm. yeah. and so parents let's create forum so, for chatting That's for true. praying yeah. together for making our children in fact i listened to a, young, a gentleman i ministered somewhere two weeks ago and um, one of the contributors came up and said look at the end of the year he has a family mm. meeting mm. with his ch children mm. and wife. And then they have goals. Mm. They, rev they review the past. Mm. And like we do, we write Thanksgiving list and we write mm. expectation list mm -hmm. in our family. But he said they have four major points and they look at career, um, finance and something else and hobby. And so they now decide what is our priority this year? What do we want mm. to get together? Yeah. What have we been able to attain? So mm. the, they are moving together mm. as a unit. And mm. so it's not that that is bearing all the burden because there are some cases where I have uh, been, in, uh, I have knowledge of where even the wife doesn't know exactly mm. what the husband is earning. Mm. And so when there is a need, she can't understand why he can't meet those mm. needs mm. 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 and that's not what it's supposed to be mm. Mm. So, so, so it's, it's actually important to mm. pro probably have uh, what you call a family devotion or the regular altar. time mm. or family altar mm. if, if every day possibly mm. at the end of the day if the children are still at home come together really be not just having to be long hours short time and then in only that time of family altar of the or family devotion you can ask them to s say express themselves how has the day been ask questions are there is there anything bothering your mind or heart or that we want us to hear or is there any way i as parents have behaved towards you mm. or towards any of the children that you can oh, hear yeah, openness so mm. if we cultivate that kind of family togetherness in the home yeah it will surely help mm. to blend the unity among the children as well as when the parents are together in the home and foster uh, a, a kind of relationship that they will cherish by the grace of God that eventually when they themselves also grow up and become they will become, yeah, become heads of those who yet. I mean I I jokingly recently told my, uh, my people that look I remember those days our dad he, there will not be, never be any particular night when he will not call all the children, all the family members to come together to pray. And that he had a bell. Uh, <laughs> is it a bell or a bell? <laughs> that yes, yes. You just you have to ring it. As soon as you hear the bell, wherever you are, you, baram, must, baram, you, must, baram, baram, you must gather together and come. And we, 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 we valued it. And thank God, God helped.
Why most of us today? You yeah. know, this is this is very crucial. Uh, David mentioned something earlier about love. You know, understanding God's love, mm. and I think it's crucial that um, uh, one of the things I I, I preached about it a while ago was how a father who does not have a good grasp of the father's love mm. cannot be a good father. Mm. 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 Because when we are adopted into Christ, we are adopted from a background of um, depravity, of spirit, of selfishness, and so on and so forth. But the love with which God loves us is so profound. Mm -hmm. We mm. have to learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's a love we have to learn about. It, mm. it, it, it's not automatic. Mm. Yes. It's mm. not automatic for me to just understand how much God loves me. Mm. Mm. No, no, it it's takes not an effort. And when, when as a parent, I can understand my flaws, understand the grace I receive from this God, how much this love <coughs> covers you know, then it's easy for me to actually demonstrate that love both to my spouse and to my children. Mm. And so I think sometimes, even as Christians, one of the greatest things that I think is lacking is not deliberately and purposefully learning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about the fatherhood of God. Mm. Because if we don't understand that fatherhood, we cannot effectively be loving parents. Yeah. And one, of, one of the things I just wanted to add is that um, there's only one commandment Jesus gave, and one, and he said, uh, John, John 13, 34, he said, love. Mm -hmm. This one commandment I give, love each other, and that's the only way people will know that you belong to me. Mm. And I think for children, the greatest diligence we can teach our children is the diligence of love. Mm -hmm. Love overlooks a multitude of sins. Yes. You know, love is giving. You know, love is patient. Love is kind. And I think within the the family, when especially if we have children with strong personalities, is to be able to really strongly celebrate each one. Mm -hmm. and demonstrate our love. It's a mm -hmm. practical thing. Mm -hmm. And I think the father's demonstration of love for his wife, it's so important mm -hmm. for children, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. children to see practically, you know, practically. You know. <coughs> the, 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 well, that's interesting indeed, uh, my host, Dr. Hapit Adegbe. What I'm just thinking now, there are situations in some homes whereby the dad is not even there mm. it's just only the mother you, you, you know thank you that are bringing up these children mm. yesterday I saw a program where because of the um, killings going on in London right now yeah. and particularly among the young people mm. the police actually are going from church to church addressing f uh, the congregants and there's this particular one they went to a Nigerian congregation mm, mm. and they were speaking in Nigerian the language, language yeah, yeah. So that's dialect that's what, yeah. to tell them that and they were ch advising the moms to ensure that they allow the men to be at home yeah. mm. to mm. you know they were encouraging family life and I, the police ah, the police yeah. I was yeah. so yeah. impressed it. yesterday was speaking I, in their I, dialect yes, we they were speaking it. their dialect yeah. and I, pl that please allow the men to be there so that they can because sometimes the young teenager may not listen to you as mom mm. but mm -hmm. their dad even if he's not doing anything else um, there. He, he's, he's there present. for them he's present that they, there is a need now now i'm happy even the society is appreciating the fact mm -hmm. that both parents are essential in the lives yeah. of the children. and that's one of the questions i wanted to ask earlier about the dysfunctions in modern family life mm -hmm. you find some uh, families both parents are working mm -hmm. so hard mm -hmm. they're hardly there mm -hmm. 
That's exactly what they are doing. And so yesterday. even kids have to let themselves into the house, mm. have to mm. fend for themselves. Mm -hmm. mm. There's a proverb in Yoruba that says that it's a tongue twister. It says, um, mm. 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 I'm not trying to repeat that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right. And what that means is, um, an un mm. untrained child that you don't train because you are pursuing so much wealth mm. Mm. is the one who is going to squander that wealth. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Here, here. Yeah. You yeah. know. Mm. And so, if you you pursue material things to the detriment of your family life, mm. at the end of the day, you will come to see that that actually means nothing. Mm. It, exactly. That's right. Your That's true right. inheritance is your investment mm. in your, your children. children. You're right, you're right. The, the, the Proverbs make very clear that wisdom is to be chose above gold and silver yeah yes. that's you know, right what what use is gold and silver if it's squandered and not used wisely that's you know right. so what that proverb sounds excellent i think we do have an issue uh, in our society with the family unit mm. i think what you can hear from the panel here as we discuss is the importance of marriage mm. and um, it's almost sad that it's taking the police to have to go and say exactly. we need fathers in homes you know mm. that's kind of a, a statement of society I, I was reading an article the other day and it was just talking about marriage and in particular monogamous marriage mm. and how successful cultures are cultures that are based on monogamous marriage, the family unit, and you see a decrease in crime, you see a decrease in mm. antisocial mm. behaviour, you see an increase in the economy and mm. output and in trade and in the family unit is incredibly important it mm. is. It it is. because it is this is where is. you grow your character this is where you develop this is where you have security and safety and when all those things are absent mm -hmm. mm. or even in the, the the home when those things are missing we have problems and, cha mm. and chaotic mm. atmosphere so, and so, so we yeah. as individuals have a real duty to seek out purposefully to have good homes mm. yes mm. purposefully purposefully, purposefully to have yes. it's not as, as someone said earlier these things don't just fall into no. place no, no. relationships don't just stay Happen. good because uh you you put no effort into it. anything yeah. that is worth takes it, work it, it's just that like a statement somebody says that marriage works when you walk right. it, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. you've got to really determine and purposefully ensure you want the best. And God is willing to help us. Mm. Yes. We, 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 our shortcomings, our imperfections, if we take it to God, He will help us. Mm. And uh, even whilst we are still waiting for that area, maybe for instance, in the home, between mm. husband and wife, there is there are areas of imperfection that the man is not so perfect and the wife is believing God for there's called for patience yes. trusting mm. God and knowing that God will eventually bring that reality of expectation into that person's mm -hmm. life just before uh, we go I would like to it's been on my mind and I, I think I would just like to say that parents should please forgive mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. children for whatever Rebecca loved Jacob because more than Isaac or despised Isaac because Isaac had offended her. She had broken mm. the rules, married the wrong women and all I that. I mean, you mean uh, Esau. Uh, Esau. 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 Had Esau, again, sorry about <laughs> these names. Things. Esau had married the wrong people, married the wrong girl that she didn't like. Grieved contrary her. to the And it grieved her spirit. In case we are grieved by anything that our children have done, mm. No, both biological and spiritual mm. children let's forgive them mm. yes. let go and as you forgive them something begins to happen in the spirit realm because what we see in the physical begins from the spiritual yes mm. and so when we let go and forgive those arrows those traumatic things that are happening will begin to be pulled out mm. of their lives and then we can build a better foundation I just pray that yeah, yeah it's fantastic we're lives. going to we're going to pray for you know children and mm -hmm. young people uh, but before we do that I just wanted to add also that 
it's important as parents to invest in our children in terms of uh, following up um, what they are doing in school and understanding yes. uh -huh. their gifts and their, their abilities. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, we leave it all to the teachers. Mm -hmm. We just say, well, go to school, drop them in school, pick them from school. And um, what I have found is that the identity and the strength a child has um, develops from home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the kind of reinforcement you give a child and the encouragement you give a child that determines a lot of how that child performs in school. And especially when they have parent uh, teachers evening, ev evenings, yeah. it is so important that we make every effort to be there. Mm. Mm. Be there, discuss with the teachers, find out what are the challenges, find out what are the problems, make an input you know yes. and it's uh, always so sad to see a child just walking in by himself with no honestly way. honestly yeah. it's always so sad. i think yeah. it, the, the, the point that was raised before yeah. someone said the word money i think we as christians need to demonstrate that the love of money is not going to bring fruit into our culture that the love mm. of people mm. is what's going to bring good fruit into our culture so we as christians uh, should demonstrate that wholeheartedly by not ch giving all our time and effort to Just chase money, which is what money. chase the yep. things that the world mm. chases. You know, mm -hmm. God is our provider and He's good. He'll provide he's for faithful. us, yeah. and He's faithful. And we'll do all the things we have to do. But you're right, investing in our children and our families mm. is fantastic. And I know, sister, you wanted to jump yeah, in. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say that we need to create time to celebrate one another. Mm. Yes. Even the little things. When our children come back from school, even our little son, when he comes back home and he says, Mommy, oh, I've got a sticker. Yes. Well done, sticker. We celebrate <laughs> it. We celebrate and you go, Oh, Mommy, I've got good news for you. So let's <laughs> learn. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what it says. You say, Oh, we need to praise God. We are jumping up and down. So let's learn mm. to celebrate them. It brings joy to them he comes back home he knows ah everybody's well, going to be happy exactly. and then it's not only that even if he's done something wrong it's an unconditional love mm -hmm. where we need to correct them we still love them they know with that correction they still love whether mm -hmm. they've got an achievement an award we still love them yes. that's unconditional love the child must know it that my parent loves me regardless no it's, right. it's such that's a right. confident building that's thing right. i can testify of that mm. personally that's mm. right. my grandmother because she was very instrumental in my growing up when i was in primary school mm. at the end of term i am sure she's got sent somebody shopping before I get back home, wow. because she wants to celebrate praise me, God for that. and it's, it's without seeing the results. Without seeing yes, the results, yeah. for that. I know. I remember in those days in Nigeria, we had Levante stores, we yeah, had yeah, stores. There would have been something, and it was such a uh, so. It was a motivation mm. to do well all the time, mm. uh, because mm. somebody is there just celebrating you and mm. all that. God bless her. She's she's Alleluia. in glory now. <laughs> wow, it's been a wonderful, wonderful uh, episode, and. Um, before we round up, I'm going to ask us to pray as we normally do, especially this particular episode we've been looking at sibling rivalry. Uh, I want us to pray for people who are in relationships where uh, their siblings are not speaking to each other, you know, families where communication have broken down. Uh, children who have perception of not being loved and I want to believe that as we pray that God will make a way mm. he has called us to reconcile others to mm. him mm. and his love and so I'm going to ask you know uh, I guess I think we can we can manage to have a prayer from each person uh, to please just pray as God leads you for our listeners uh, this morning and all our past episodes are available on podcast you can find us on Spotify and iTunes by searching Chapel of Light or my name Dr. Peter Adigbe you can also follow us on Spark on our website www.acli.org.uk on the YouTube channel and on Facebook, on Twitter, we on Instagram. We would love to hear from you, so do contact us please with your feedback or questions by sending an email to us 
at info at sai.org.uk. Uh, Pastor Theo, we want to start the prayer. Okay, just briefly. Hmm. We just want to say thank you, Lord, for a moment like this. And we want to thank you, Lord, that uh, your good hand is out there because there's no barrier in the spirit. Let there be healing. Let there be restoration Amen. of our families. Amen. Let there be joy. Amen. And we speak peace, the shalom of God. Mm -hmm. Nothing missing, nothing broken into the homes. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the way you have helped us today. We know that these people that are listening to us, or listening to us at this hour, they are all created by you. Mm -hmm. And you know how to mend whatever is broken in their life, on their situations. Wherefore, oh God, we ask that your supernatural hands will work in their lives to bring forth amendments and reconciliation where there is rivalry within the family. Mm -hmm. We pray that the Spirit of the Lord will heal that particular rivalry and be removed by the authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We pray for those who are struggling to bring up their children, maybe all or their own as single parents. Mm -hmm. Oh, Father, the Word says you are the God who of all families of the earth mm -hmm. we therefore pray that mm -hmm. all the help touch individual needs in those homes you will supply unto them mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We speak divine presence and comfort to those that are distressed and are wearied. Mm -hmm. And I pray today that the comfort of the Holy Spirit will come upon you mm -hmm. and you'll be lifted up till you find strength and courage to carry on, mm -hmm. knowing that the reward of yours is greater than what any human being can give. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We are praying, O oh Lord, in any family where there is a sibling rivalry. Lord, please give them the grace to forgive one another in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are praying for that special grace, O oh Lord, that they'll be able to look to one another. If they need to make phone calls, if they need to uh, write letters or any means of communication, just give them the grace to be able to take up that courage and speak to one another, forgive one another because the Bible says where there is unity, that's where you command the blessing. Mm. We yes. pray that the blessing will be upon the home in Jesus name. Amen. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes Lord God, we thank you God that you are in the business of restoration and of forgiveness Lord. There is there's nobody out of your reach God. There is no situation that is too hard for you Lord. Mm -hmm. There is no family too dysfunctional for you to to work in yes. and Lord we just pray for those that are listening God that you would your will Lord would be done in their lives Lord God that you would enable them to open their hearts to you that they would bring their worries and their struggles and their traumas and everything that um, is is negative for them that they would be able to bring them to you God and that you would be able to lift their burdens Lord yes. and that you would be able to give your peace that can only be given by you Lord Jesus yes. we pray Lord that you would minister to hearts and souls right now Lord in Jesus name Amen. Amen Heavenly Father we thank you for your goodness and for your love towards us Lord your word has taught us that we are brought into your family Lord, we recognize that the families that we have here on this earth are only for a time and for a season, mm. and that we have been adopted into your heavenly family, which is eternal. Mm. Lord, mm. we pray in this time that we have that we would love those in our families yes. as you have commanded us, Lord, for you loved us. Father, first, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. And Father, you commend that love towards us, not by our works. You love us by your grace, so mm. we pray that you would help us, Lord, to love those in our family and our neighbors and our community mm -hmm. in the same spirit, Jesus, we ask. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for listening. And uh, till we come your way next week on Max Life on Spark Sunderland, it is a very, very good Sunday from uh, April and uh, David, from Pastor Julius and Winifred, and from my co host, uh, Theodora. Have, Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Yeah. God bless, God bless you. you.